Welcome to Whiskey is a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and you guys are watching my series on the top five beginner whiskeys. Today's episode is going to cover my top five beginner Irish whiskeys, part two. And there's nothing specific about this list. I have ABVs all over the place. I have ages all over the place. I'm doing blends, I'm doing single malts, I'm doing single pot still. So there really is no catch to this one. But what is consistent is I'm preparing a flight of five whiskeys to introduce my friends to beginner Irish whiskeys. And then I'm going to include my sixth bottle, which is going to be a special whiskey towards the end of the night that's gonna offer them something a little bit different and have them looking forward to the next time we meet and talk a little bit about and taste some Irish whiskey. So like always, my criteria is pretty much the same. This all has to come from my own personal collection. I can't obviously give somebody whiskey that I don't have or have tasted before, so I have to be able to talk about it. None of this stuff is allocated. These should be shelfers. You should be able to go to a big box store and find these on the shelf. I understand that all the markets are a little bit different. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, so all of these are readily available to me. So with that, let's go ahead and get to my first bottle. And this one is going to kick off the night in a hurry. This is going to be Red Breast 12. This is the cask strength. This one clocks in at 56.3% ABV. I paid $79.99 when I first got this. This was one of my original whiskeys that I purchased. And since then, the price has gone up to $110. And that could be a talking point with this talking about how the prices of whiskey are out of control and how the whiskey boom and the other you know financial factors that are happening in the world are causing things and causing the prices to increase. This is a single pot still Irish, which is a triple distilled. And single pot still is a combination of malted and unmalted barley. And if you did mention this the last time you guys were getting together, they should have a pretty good understanding of what malted and unmalted barley is. Just like the lower proof Red Breast 12, this is a combination of, of X bourbon and X Oloroso sherry casks. And like I mentioned, this does pack a punch. Right up front, you do get hit with that ABV, but there is a really good well-rounded sweetness here. The sherry's coming through, the pot still spice is coming through. I get golden raisins and prunes, and then the vanilla, honey, and oak is coming through with that X bourbon. Everything comes through on the palate as well. This to me is one of my favorite Irish whiskeys. The ABV might be a little bit more than a beginner can handle, but the depth of flavor you get with the higher ABVs is going to challenge them to actually start to concentrate on the flavors below those ABVs. Just like a peated scotch or a peated whiskey is gonna make them or try to get them to concentrate on the flavors underneath that dominant note. And the dominant note here might be that ABV, so see if they can get past that. Before I go any further, let me know in the comments down below what your top five beginner Irish would be if you want to level up just a little bit with a group of friends. What will be your five and what is going to be your special pour at the end of the night? Leave that in the comments down below. And if you guys are new to the channel and you like this information, why don't you go ahead and do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. I've got a week left before I hit my one year anniversary and I'm trying to make that final push to 2000 subscribers. You guys can help me make that happen. Do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. All right, now that everybody's palate is primed and ready to go, bottle number two. Same distillery, different make. This is going to be Yellow Spot. This is aged 12 years, just like the Red Breast. This is also a single pot still whiskey. But unlike the Red Breast, this is actually triple cask matured. We have bourbon and sherry, which is just like the Red Breast, but this is also matured in a Malaga barrel. And just that one cask makes this smell so much different. This is coming in at 46% ABV, so it's gonna give your palate a little bit of a respite. And again, this is one of the first Irish whiskeys that I purchased and I paid $94.99. And since then, less than a year, this has gone up to $115 now. 46% is typically the non-chill filtration cutoff and this is a non-chill filtered whiskey. On the nose, you get really good sweetness, vanilla, butterscotch. The creme brulee is coming through here along with some slight amount of spice. On the palate, nice amounts of vanilla and oak. The pot still spice is coming through and the sweetness on here is not over the top in any way. It's a really good balanced pour and especially coming off of the higher strength red breast, I think they're going to enjoy this a whole lot. 
Now my next bottle is gonna throw them a little bit of a curveball, and we're gonna introduce a peated Irish. And that's gonna be the legendary Dark Silky. This also is coming in at 46% ABV. It's non-chill filtered, it is peated, and it's coming in at a more respectable $41. It's blended with 70% corn, 15% unpeated single malt, and then 15% peated single malt. This is going to test their ability to, again, find something underneath that peat. Even though the peat is not that strong, this has a good amount of sweetness layered directly underneath that initial hint of peat. On the palate, subtle amounts of peat, sweet, tobacco, chocolatey. Hits the mid palate, the peat swells a little bit, and then it finishes with some sweetness and a little bit of oak bitterness on the side. And just like all of the other videos when we're doing this part two, you're trying to actually have your crew or whoever it is that's tasting this stuff to really dive into the pores and see if they can get anything else out of it. You really wanna challenge their palate and their nose. Try to offer some suggestions on what they might be smelling and what they might be tasting because you don't want to discount the fact that power of suggestion might cause them to say, oh yeah, I actually do get this. Start out with something simple. Just ask them general questions. Is it sweet? Is it spice? If they say that it's sweet, dive in a little further and ask them to try to define the sweet. Is it a candy sweet? Is it a vanilla, honey, brown sugar sweet? Just kind of guide them a little bit. Hold their hand, so to, so to speak, and just see if they can pull other stuff out of it. And with me, this one has some really good dark chocolate bitterness to it. And that might be something that you guys get, maybe not. And if you are familiar with any of these and you disagree with some of, them, some of my tasting notes, let me know in the comments down below what you guys get out of these things. All right, three down, three to go. Let's go on to bottle number four. Bottle number four is gonna kickstart their taste buds again. We've got Writer's Tears. This is the 2021 release. It's coming in at cask strength, 54.2%. And I paid at the time $104 for this. This is a blended whiskey, single pot still, and single malt. Coming off of the smoky, or coming off of the peated one, I get a blast of fruit here. This is non-chill filtered, and it is matured in American oak. And this one to me is a little bit strange. I get a soapy, fruity note. And even though soapy might sound a little bit off-putting, actually a lot off putting. I don't know if you guys have ever had your mouth washed out with soap when you were younger for swearing. This kind of, in a way, reminds me of a soapy note without all of the yelling and screaming that goes along with punishment when you were a kid. Not that I was punished all that much, but I do have a distinct soapy note in here. Heavy vanilla, definitely pear and apple. On the palate, I think a lot of these things are gonna show through as well. Yeah, really good punch of the ABV. That apple pear note is definitely coming through. Vanilla, honey, oak. The soapy note is no longer there on the palate, but I do get it on the nose, that's for sure. All right, what do you guys think so far? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, give me your five initial whiskeys that will be in your flight, along with your kicker whiskey. Bottle number five is my obsession right now. We went to a speakeasy with my brother-in-law and sister, and we ran into Limavati. Limavati is a single malt, a single barrel, single malt. Coming in at a 46% ABV. This one cost me $47, $48 basically. And this is finished in ex bourbon and Pedro Jimenez casks. I'm all about Pedro Jimenez right now. It is fantastic. I love that flavor that comes across those dark, rich fruits. And you mix in the honey and the vanilla and the brown sugar with the ex bourbon. It is a well-rounded, a very pleasant sipper. This one comes across with a powdered sugar donut, almost a powdered sugar jelly donut. This might sound strange. It is soft on the nose, but it explodes with sweetness. On the palate, yeah, very nice balance with the ex bourbon and the Pedro Jimenez. Slight sulfur tinge on the palate, but it doesn't last very long. And then you're overpowered with that sweetness, the Pedro Jimenez, the vanilla, the honey, the brown sugar. Like I mentioned, I'm obsessed with this one right now. I absolutely love the complexity and the well-rounded flavors that this presents. The only thing that I do not like about this bottle is how you open it. It has a weird cap. It's a glass cap. And if you try to pull this straight out, it's very difficult. But if you just put your thumbs and open it up that way, it's a lot easier. So if by chance you end up getting this bottle and you have a hard time opening it, so there you go, there's your whiskey tip of the day. 
So that's my first five bottles of the night. So my sixth and final bottle is coming in at $97. Napogue Castle, 16 year old. This is single malt sherry cask finished. Coming in at 43% ABV. And the maturation to this, as I reach across here, the maturation on this is going to be 14 years in bourbon barrels. And then it spends an extra 21 months in Oloroso sherry casks. Knowing 14 years in bourbon barrels, I should get vanilla, honey, and brown sugar. And then the Oloroso sherry casks should give me some lighter fruit notes, maybe the golden raisins. So as this is happening, kind of coach them along and see if they can actually pull those notes out of it when you're talking to your friends about the cask maturations. I immediately get hit with a little bit of a sulfur note, which is not uncommon with sherried whiskeys. And then back behind that, I get some vanilla and honey, brown sugar, just like I would expect to find in the bourbon casks. With the single malt, I do get a little bit of the malty note in here. I do get a mustiness. There's a subtle sweetness, not overpowering. And then on the palate, it's well-rounded, it's sweet, it's got a little bit of spice. You get that malt note. The 16 years in the bourbon barrel gives you a good amount of oak without being too over oaked. And then it unfolds with those sherry notes. The golden raisins, a little bit of a sweet fig, plum, and throw in a little bit of sweet pineapple as well. And then one last time, these are my six bottles. What are your six? Leave them in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, share, do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. Help me out hitting that 2000 subscriber mark. And like always, Enjoy your journey, and we will talk to you guys later with part two of my weeded bourbons. And I'll leave it at that. We'll talk to you guys later.